Welcome to the Shipless Life Podcast. We are your hosts, Yvonne de la Flor and Severine Nassens, and we are the founders of the Shipless Life Academy. Join us at sheeplesslife.com for a free and exclusive masterclass on sheepless living. We created this podcast for women like you who are ready and eager to live and lead without the herd mentality. Women who are ready to be, not who your parents told you to be, not who the system expects you to be, not who the media wants you to be, but who you can truly become. So relax, step out of the herd for a moment, grab something to sip on and have a pencil at hand just in case you feel the urge to take some notes. Let's get the show on the road. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, this is Severine Nassens and today I have with me in person Yvonne de la Flor. We're both in Cancun and we are ready for our podcast number 30 and we are live on Instagram Sheepless Life and uh, on Yvonne de la Flor also live on Facebook so we are all over the place today all over the place <laughs> like the like a good feminine would be oh yes well we're multitasking <laughs> as we're uh, recording this podcast live for you uh, from a really beautiful location in Cancun and uh, today we are going to speak about the divine masculine and the sacred feminine and there's three points that we are going to share um, on this topic there's much much more to talk about we're, we're going to keep it to three and the first one Yvonne I, I think it's it's a strong one it's the rejection of these forces uh, which equals the rejection of, of oneself Ooh. Wow so hi everybody I'm, I'm Yvonne de la Flor the other part of the shipless life if you see me in the live stream moving my hands is because I'm surrounded by beautiful mosquitoes we're in Cancun right now and uh, yeah you know I had a very strong intuition to bring this topic I've been called very strongly to uh, just to share more about not only the dance of polarities that these two forces play in humanity the sacred feminine and the divine masculine but the importance of it of number one not rejecting this there is a lot of uh, confrontation these days and um, a lot of opinions happening um, a lot of opinions happening uh, regarding uh, the divine feminine or the divine masculine I'm back here or the divine masculine and there's a lot of uh, misconceptions thinking that the divine feminine or the divine masculine only exist on men or on women as long as we reject any of these forces within us as long as we reject the energies of the feminine or the masculine in a memory let's say your mother you didn't like how your mother raised you let's say your father your father abandoned uh, your family or your father died when you were uh, gone when you you were young as soon as we as long as we do not befriend the history of our lives the systemic history of our lives that includes our mother and father the feminine the masculine what if we reject any part of our story we're rejecting part of our beings any part of our story reflected in the external world we will be rejecting these forces and until there's no understanding that our mother or our father whatever the history was of them represent display of consciousness these forces this dance of polarities also in us and we don't welcome that we love and we reject being like our mother a lot of women do mm -hmm. Go, a lot of women has um, yeah, so I'm, <laughs> I'm skipping something, but you know, a, a lot of women grow up saying, I'm never going to be like my mother. A lot of <laughs> men re grow up saying, I'm never going to do what my father did. Mm -hmm. But until, if that continues to be like kind of like a rejection, it's a great motivation to be better, to thrive uh, more, to do better things for your children in the future. But as long as there's rejection to a part, you're rejecting the whole. Mm -hmm. and the first step to really even begin to feel the power of the divine feminine and the demi divine masculine within is to really stop rejecting the story of your relationship of these forces in your mother and your father and start embracing it. Oof. I just had a huge insight. I, I, hadn't, I hadn't realized that for a uh, quite a long period in, in my life until in my 30s I was very masculine. I rejected the feminine because I was rejecting 
many of the things that had to do with my mother. It's really amazing. This is therapy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Live therapy, Live one therapy. on one. And it's, and it's amazing that once you, as you said, once you start embracing that, which takes us to the second, to the st second part of this podcast, once you start embracing the masculinity and the femininity in everything that is in you, things start balancing out. Your life starts gaining balance. And, and everything starts to flow a lot better. The, the, the internal struggle is, is leaving, uh, specifically uh, consider concerning what the masculine and the feminine part of one uh, concerns. And both men and women, we have both in us. Yes. And um, I know this. Uh, we we tend to do the podcast no longer than fifteen minutes mm -hmm. or so. And this is this is really not a topic of conversation, but of embodiment. I'm going to repeat this. This is not even a topic of conversation, but of embodiment, of welcoming these two forces within us, of using the external aspect of our reality, the metaphors of our life, the, our upbringing, our religion, our traditions, the politics and on, on the world, our expectations in relationships, of, of the duality, of the polarity, of what a man or a woman should be, of what the masculine mm. or the feminine should be. All of that is an external mirror that is inviting us to dwell, um, take a plunge in the inner ocean of our own divinity and welcome these two forces with their storms, with their, with their peace, with all of what they are. Because once these two forces are embraced within us, something alchemical pa uh, happens. Mm -hmm. And I had that experience in the year 2000. And it occurs something called the inner marriage, where both of your polarities, because we all have masculine and we all have feminine, instead of you rejecting one part or the other, and a lot of women, I do want to say something, like you said, I was very masculine. Maybe you were just a strong feminine. I want to tell all the ladies that you are probably told you are too masculine. You are going like a man. You don't let men be a man. You know, maybe that's your, your strong feminine. And if it's your masculine, be okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, don't invite anyone or don't allow anyone to help you reject everything that is you. If anybody tells you you are being too young or too jing or too masculine or too strong, say, all right, I appreciate your opinion, and thank you, Anne. No. Thank you. <laughs> because, you know, we are both forces, and so to really bring the balance in the external world that we desire to see in the male and the female energies, an inner marriage has to occur first, and that's the ultimate alchemy of, of these two energies. And the more, you know, like right now your face, like the, the light of, <laughs> uh, of the Severine's face, like imagine being told that you are masculine as a woman or that you are, it doesn't really matter. It's really just a concept. Mm -hmm. Take those invitations as an invitation to go marry literally yourself, to marry all of what you are, the light, the dark, the good, the bad, the feminine and the masculine. Because when that inner marriage occurs, I had the experience in 2000, I'm gonna let you know, I'm gonna tell you a little bit, very sure. quickly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there was the war in Iraq, and the war in Iraq, um, there was uh, the television, you know, uh, there was a lot of news that the war had like bursted out, and I began to feel deep sadness. Mm. I began to feel a lot of grief. I was talking to a friend. He was in Australia back then, and I was on the phone. I never watched the TV. I turned it on for some reason, and uh, and I watched that the war was there, and I just felt uh, like a deep, deep, deep-seated wound in my heart. I, I couldn't feel the separation of Iraq and me. I couldn't feel the separation of people over there or over here. I couldn't feel, I couldn't feel separation. I just felt the deep pain of un trying to understand why are we as human beings still manifesting war, battling forces, trying to have power over others, you know, masculine over the feminine, feminine over the masculine. And I enter in such a deep wound that I didn't shy out from my own pain. I went so deep that I had this experience of unbelievable, unlimited, unconditional love. In that moment, my whole home illuminated. It was like a sunrise, literally inside my house, and it was like 9 p.m. at night. Mm -hmm. Everything got illuminated, and I fell in love with God within. I found the soulmate. I began to find the soulmate in every human being. There's not one day that I don't find the soulmate in anyone, but what it occurred is that that inner marriage, I became truly married 
to what I call the soulmate called God. I even wrote a book called uh, Your Soulmate Called God. Mm -hmm. And um, but that experience of the inner marriage, once you know it, once you meet it, it never leaves you. And no matter what people tell you, no matter how contradictory forces are or polarities be, uh, are appearing in your life, there's no way, one, that you can't take responsibility for your creation. Two, there's no way that you will ever want others to be something that they are not. Mm -hmm. And number three, you will know all of yourself, your light, your darkness, your feminine, your masculine, and the inner marriage is so strong. And this is my favorite part about this, that God realization, Meeting God eye to eye through the grace and mystical power of your heart is inevitable. <sighs> Thank you. I'm speechless. <laughs> Something that doesn't happen very often, but I think this is <laughs> this is very it's very powerful and I'm 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 taking it all in and I'd like to invite everybody who's listening to that po to this podcast to take it in and look for that marriage between your your sacred feminine and your divine masculine and you know how let me give them three tips very how three tips how how can you find that inner marriage within number one if there's any rejection you have for any or the other if you are feeling that you judge women or you judge men or any moment that you that you find yourself judging something as I'm disappointed at this or that, take that as an opportunity for you to go within. Mm -hmm. How could you bring harmony? How could you bring these pola po uh, two polarities, two voices into harmony? If you were the mediator of your own feminine and masculine energy within you, what would you advise to do these two polarities in you? So whenever you have a conflict with a spouse, for example, mm -hmm. or with your beloved or with your children, you know, there's two polarities again playing. There's, there's the, the, the different pendulums playing on. Before, even in the conflict, that's a great opportunity. Ask yourself, if I was a mediator this moment and my only duty and my only focus was to bring harmony to these two, what would you advise to your forces? What would you av advise to your sacred feminine and the sacred masculine within you? I promise you that you're going to enter in this ecstatic love for God, source, consciousness, and it's all going to emerge from you. That was one. Oh yeah, well I include <laughs> them all. I put <laughs> one, them all two, together, three, all so together. that's it. So yes, well, we have, uh, we have homework to do, ladies and gentlemen. I think this is a, a beautiful uh, opportunity right before we go into uh, the Christmas period and the end of the year, before we meet with our family and, and go through um, many emotions, most of us, um, as this, this time of year comes close. I think it's a beautiful, a beautiful uh, time to be um, attentive to that and, uh, and, find, and find that marriage and work on it. Marriage is a a work in progress. That's a real marriage, you know, because you marry people, but it's, you know, one of my teachers always said, not two people have ever met. They just meet the expectation, the projection, and the story you have of the other. Next not podcast. two people <laughs> have ever met, but we are going to leave it like that. Right. And uh, we send you all our love to your masculine, your feminine as one. Thank you so much for listening, and also for those who are uh, here on, on, um, on Instagram with us. Thank you for being here, and uh, we're signing off. So we can go into the Spanish version. Talk to you next week. Bye bye. Subscribe to this weekly podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. Share your thoughts with us on Facebook.com forward slash Sheepless Life Academy and learn firsthand how to live a sheepless life with Yvonne and receive an exclusive in depth masterclass at SheeplessLife.com.